Welcome to Hello Self. It's a podcast focused on turning your cans into cans and your dreams into plans. I am your host, coach, and author, Patricia Leonard. Well, hello out there to my friends coming to see what we have on Hello Self Podcast today. I'd like to welcome you, and I've got a fabulous guest that you're going to enjoy so much and learn a lot from him. Remember that I believe that in every person's story, there are many gifts and lots of glories. So look for the strategies and tips that impacted his life and Maybe they might fit for you because remember, this podcast is about you getting your dreams and goals off that someday shelf and turning your cans into cans and your dreams into plans. So welcome. I am your host, Patricia Leonard. So I'm getting ready to give you a little overview of my guest And then, well, I'll just tell you right now, doctor, just say a shout out to uh, everybody on here, and then I'll give an overview of you. Thanks again, Patricia, Ms. Patricia, for the uh, uh, opportunity to be on this platform. I really want to say thank you, and thanks for all that you do uh, for people, your audience. Uh, This is such a great platform i've been following uh your previous podcasts and really enjoying them okay <laughs> let uh, me hello everyone, <laughs> you, see, everyone. Yeah. <laughs> you see why i wanted him on here he gave me a great compliment <laughs> oh my god okay you're going to enjoy this today i guarantee you we connected through alignment which is a social media connection for networking group. And we didn't know each other at all. We found out we live in the same town. We may think we're very different than other people, but when you really have a conversation, hello self and hello to someone else, you find out there are a lot of common threads. And that's exactly what happened to Oli. And I want to tell you, I have pronounced that name wrong, and we keep laughing about it. So I'm doing my best. So I'm just going to call him doctor from now on so that I won't struggle with his name. And he might tell you exactly how to say it. And But you'll be able to see this podcast and learn more about him. So let me introduce the doctor to you. And we're going to have fun today, but also offer a lot of strategies and tips from his life journey. Okay, he is the doctor. Oya Woli is the author of Could Be and Should Be. Does that sound like Hello Self? Could Be and Should Be, Unlocking Your Inner Strength. You see why he's on here because he and I are on a joint mission in this society to help you all see who you really are and your God-given talents. He's an author, he's a pastor, and a practicing physician and was founder and CEO of Primary Care, I Care Primary Care. During this residency at Meharry College here in Tennessee, he received, he did all kinds of things and he'll share more, but he received an award or accolades of clinical excellence award. So he has done uh, everything that he's going to tell you about and encourage you to do. He's done it himself. So he can, he's an expert in it in just living life. That's what we all want to do. In 2013, he founded Jahara Ministries. It's a ministry dedicated to prayer. And in 2013, constant prayer, living in the prayer. In 2013, he launched his Bible church, The Awakening. And he will give you more about this. And you see why he's an author. He's a, 
he gets things done and he goes after helping you clarify who you are. I like this part of him because I really like, I like all parts, but what I really like about this is he is a storyteller. And I love the arts. And I think that storytelling is the way to open doors that nothing else, that no language can open. So storytelling is exactly what he'll be doing today about his own life and sharing that. So he's storytelling that impacts lives as a transformative form, force. So he sees the world the same way I do, is that we can find out more about who we are and maximize our dreams and goals by finding hello self and getting out there and maybe listening to some stories. So now I have done everything that I can do and stumbled through the whole thing. So now I'm going to turn it over to the expert of his own life the storyteller, doctor, let us know what your journey has been. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much, Patricia. Thank you, everyone. I am Dr. Oye Wale. Uh, and Miss Pat, you did a great job trying to say it, my name. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I'll learn better, doctor. <laughs> Oye Wale. <laughs> yes, you're yeah. doing good. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad to be here. First thing, I would like to say is that my life is a testimony and I couldn't be here without the power of God. Uh, I'm a man of faith, as you could um, rightly tell. And my story, I believe when you all hear me, you will understand why I said that. Well, let's go back in time. Yes. Uh, as a young boy, 10 years of age, I was 10 years old, when I told my parents I wanted to travel out of the country to study, 10 years old, I guess I wasn't satisfied with the status quo. I'm a man of introspection. I've taken a lot in my environment. So I wanted to do more with my life, even at 10 so at there about 16 years of age, I began to think about how to get out of Nigeria. I'm originally from Nigeria at 16. Think about that. <laughs> so at that time, I became aware of the visa lottery program. That's a program that the U.S. coordinates all over the world to bring immigrants into the country. But I was still in high school at the time didn't have the funds. So I dropped the idea. And I believe a year or, or two afterwards, the program re resurfaced again on my path. I woke up one morning listening to the radio and there you go, the program again. And that morning, it was as if the stars aligned in my favor. I felt a nudge in me saying, this is the time. A hello self moment. And that was a that was a hello self moment for me. This is the time. So I rose, went to my uh, parents. They were in the room. I said, "Mom, Dad, I want to apply for the U.S. visa lottery." Oh no, we don't have the money. We have a lot of bills. They gave some excuses, but then later on they thought about it. They were like, "You know what? We'll give you the money at the end of the month." So they gave me 800 Naira. That's like less than a dollar. 800 Naira. And I applied. And to the glory of God, I am here in America today. <laughs> so I, I won the visa lottery. The chances of winning is very low. They only pick up about 55,000 in, in every country. And I think Nigeria has reached the limit for that according to uh, the last statistics. So that's how I got to the US. So my LOSF movement continued. Now I came to the U.S. on my own as a teenager. Oh my gosh. My parents were back home. I lived with my cousin for, for a little bit before I became independent. So 
Then when I got here, my end of settlement was like, okay, what am I going to do with my life? So I am here in the US, what is the next path for me? So I did some college back home, but I had to continue college when I got here. So I got to college, I didn't know what I was going to do because why there were lots of voices in my head. People knew I was new in the country. They told me, oh, do this, do that, do this, do that. I was confused. So I had to sit back and ask myself, what am I here to do? Initially, so now le let me give our audience something to learn. Yes, yes. In life, many times we may not have the answer right away. But we need to take a step of faith. Because when we take that step of faith, God is going to back it up. So I took that step of faith, e even though I wasn't so clear about what I was going to do specifically, I knew that my interest was in science. So I started on the path of pre-pharmacy in college. And one day, I did an internship with a pharmacist and I was telling the pharmacist about my life and everything. And then we got talking. It was like, if I were you and I had the opportunity that you have right now, I would go to medical school. Oh, wow. And that brought to me an awareness because I know that uh, I remembered rather while in high school, no, I was pretty, I was, I was a, a great student. Let's put it that way. I attended quiz competitions. We comp co competed with uh, different high schools. One of those competitions we went to was at a teaching hospital in my city at the time. And as I walked past the hospital wards, just the smell coming from that area, I'm like, one day I want to be a doctor. I said that to myself. That was an, an LO segment that happened to me as a teenager during high school. So when this pharmacist told me this, I remember that. And I also remembered my grandfather who was sick for quite a long time, was bedridden. And every time I went to, to the village to, to visit him, I wasn't quite happy about the state. I wished at that age, even at the tender age of probably 11, 12, I wished at that age that I could improve the quality of his life. So I knew at that time that there's something in me that wants to care for people, that wants to cater to people's needs. Yeah, go ahead, Patricia. Yes, let me insert something right here for our audience so we can highlight this. Yes. Here's something that he, um, that the doctor just reiterated, and I want to reiterate it, that it is so important when those flashbacks come back to you, pay attention, because that may be God giving you another sign another or whoever your higher self is giving you another sign so pay attention that is a hello self type of intervention that can shift so i want to make sure you pay attention to that piece that doctor just shared okay so go on i'll keep interrupting every that, now and then that's but, fine. oh this is yeah I'm so engrossed in your story, too. Thank you. And, and like you said, too, there, there, there are several stages of our lives that we have to, or that we will continue to rediscover ourselves. Because every day that passes, every month that passes, we are developing a better version of ourselves. And, and that's one thing that has characterized my life all the way to this point, I never remain complacent. I am always asking myself, how can I be better? Even as a physician, I still ask myself, how can I be better? How can I do this differently? How can I produce better results? And that applies to our lives. Going back to this story, the pharmacist helped me to develop that awareness. Now listen, that is true. You wanted to become a doctor, even as a teenager. You just lost sight of it because of the cacophony of voices in your ears when you got to the state. 
That day, I applied to medical school right there in his office. Oh my gosh, I have to say another thing here, doctor, is what we do is we put these things like doctor just shared. He said, I applied right there. What we do, a lot of us, and you know if it's you or not, audience, that we put our dreams and goals on a someday shelf. Okay, farm, Mr. Pharmacist or Miss Pharmacist, I'm going to do that someday. No. Did you hear what he just said? His strategies are do it now because the moment can slip by and you'll say, I'll do it someday. When I get the money, when I have the time, when I get my family grow. Yeah. Another great point. Okay. Thank you for letting me interrupt. These are so you, powerful. You are so welcome. Yeah. So I applied right in his office and following up on what you just said now, when we put those crucial decisions on the shelf, we may lose the passion because that moment slides away. We may lose that passion. So it's always, of course, you want to balance. You don't want to do anything in, in a haste, in a rush. But this is something that I've been thinking about for a long time, trying to rediscover myself. And now here comes someone who is helping me find me. Yes, yes. He's helping me find me. You know, so that day I applied to medical school right there in his office. Now that is a different, th that set my life on a different trajectory from that point on. So I got into medical school, praise God, but I had so many challenges. I call them the trying of faith moments. The trying of faith moments. Because my faith was tested and tried. My perseverance was tested and tried. And it took the grace of God for me to be standing today as a practicing physician. So I did my medical school in, well, partly in the Caribbean and the United States. So it's a university called the American University of Antigua. So we have our basic sciences there and all our clinical sciences is in the US. I did most of mine in New York. Now, now in med for you to become a practicing physician, you have to take several exams, like three, three different board exams before you can be fully licensed. Along the way, I had challenges. Now, besides the exams, you have to apply to residency. Medical residency is the license, so to say, to practice medicine. So if you don't complete residency, you can't really practice medicine. There are some states that will allow you to have at least one year, but you have to have residency to practice. So getting into residency became an issue for me because I had challenges with some of those exams. And God's grace was the guiding light for me all along. Think about this. You apply to over a hundred residency programs and none of them would say yes to you. Like your friends are getting interviews, you get, you got zero. See in life, we are going to be faced with situations like this. When we are aspiring for one thing or another, and it's as if we keep eating roadblocks. You're looking for yeses, but all you get is no. You're looking for yeses, all you get is no. These are times where we have to ask ourselves, what is the problem? What is the problem? And when we start asking that que those questions, something is going to stir up in us at some point 
that will guide us toward the answer that we're looking for. So I had several of those moments along my journey. Before, before residency, I had some of one of those, one of those moments during my a quest to succeed on one of my exams. Now, this is where my faith comes in, and this is gonna resonate very well with people of the Christian faith, mostly like myself. There was one of the exams that I struggled with so much. I studied hard. I would wake up six o'clock in the morning. I would study like 10, 11 at night, studying. I only take maybe few breaks in between, but yet I had nothing to show for it. And there are some people that would study even after the time that I study and they get it right there. They had, they, had, they had no struggles. So what is wrong with me? Why am I having these struggles? Why can I pass this particular exam? That was my early self moment. Now, I have a very strong Christian background. My father is a pastor. He's still a pastor. He's been a pastor for over 30 years. So I pretty much grew up in the church. So that set me up for the kind of awareness that I had at this point of my life. So I said, I've done everything possible. I'm studying so hard. I'm working on what's going on then. I felt that God was telling me that your problem is not physical. Your problem is spiritual. That was my elo self moment. Spiritual. Your problem is spiritual. It's not physical. So I was in Atlanta at that time when I was studying for this uh, test. So I said, wow, I think that makes sense. So I embarked on a seven day fast. Again, I'm a physician, so I have to be careful about this. For my audience, I am not recommending that you fast. If you want to embark on a fast, please talk to your physician and make sure it is safe for you. That's very important. Good point. Yeah, but I embarked on a fast, a seven-day fast. For me, fasting is a way to humble myself before God and tell him, God, I need your help. I've done all I can, all I could as human, but at this point, I'm heading nowhere, help me. So that, that's the purpose of my fast. And he did. So day seven of my fast, so the way I fasted was no food, no drink. I was crazy. <laughs> Till three o'clock in the afternoon. And I was still studying. So I'll take a break, six o'clock, oh, sorry, nine o'clock. I'll get up, I'll pray, study the scriptures. 12 o'clock, the same thing. I did all that for seven days. And on day seven, I had a revelation. Can't remember the revelation up to today, but pretty much it meant that my battle was not yet won. So I continued the fast for another seven days, making 14 days total. And I wrote this in my book, Could Be and Should Be. By the way, my book is a, mo a motivational self-help book with a Christian bias. But it is written in a way to uh, appeal to even those who aren't Christians. So I wrote it that way because I believe that my story is not just to help Christians, but to help everyone. Because my story is a story of endurance, the story of perseverance. I was, life threw a lot at me that, that, that would ordinarily make me give up, that would ordinarily have silenced me. That is, that's important. When we encounter challenges in life, life is trying to silence you. It's trying to limit you. It's trying to prevent you from being the best version of yourself. And why? That's the why of that is important. Because when God helps us to overcome others, challenges. When we get to our destination, we will not only be a blessing to ourselves, but we will be a blessing to other people as well. Yes, yes. There are lives that are connected to my life. There are lives connected to your life. 
And those destinies are depending on you. I had a revelation once during one of those trying moments. And I saw these people. They were telling me, these people are waiting for you. That was, that's what I was being told in that revelation. These people are waiting for you. And one of my friends in New York said something that brought back that revelation. She told me, because at that time I was working at, at, at a hospital in the quality management department in New York while I was trying to get into residency. I divided, but this is very important. And she looked at me. She saw the potential. She said, you should not be here. Your patients are waiting for you. Very interesting. What yeah. a profound statement. Yeah. Yes. You, said, we, you should not be here. The, absolutely. Oh, this is, I am just mesmerized by your story. Thank Number you. one, I really like there, because the mind does play a game with our spirit. And the mind likes, I wrote something about ego. Now, ego can be good, but ego can also get in the way of when you've got nose, the ego will tell you the mind ego based upon culture and all of that will tell you, just give up. That's not your root. Just give up. But when you engage the total being, the spiritual self, the emotional self, the mental self, then you look more broadly at who am I? And my patients are waiting. What a profound statement to help you be more patient with your journey that they'll be there. Just keep going. Yeah. Oh those my do, those yeah. words she said resonated with me. She said, your patients are waiting for you. And this is me that was still trying to get into residency. So she was, in other words, like you said, telling me, keep on pressing. Don't yes. give up on your goal. Don't give up on your purpose. And you know what? That, oh my gosh, don't give up on your goal. And I like that so much. I came from corporate America and we put all these plans together at the first of the year. Okay, this is what we're going to do do in our department this year and this is the money and guess what life happened as we went forward in the year we the plans sometimes are only things to get us started they're not necessarily the destination mm -hmm. and that is so key to don't give up on the broader dreams but maybe your way is not the only way and that was what she said to you they'll be there just be patient. Don't give up. Yeah. Oh, wow. And I hope all of you are catching all these pearls of wisdom that this doctor is sharing with you because these are things that are going to help you overcome any can'ts that you have in your head. Get out of your head and get in your heart and spirit. And if it is your way, get in a spiritual situation with people or find a tribe. I always say, as I'm coaching, find a tribe that supports your journey and where you're wanting to go and learn from them. And they can also help you move along. So it, just like the doctor said earlier, it doesn't have to be his way. You don't have to fast. You don't have to do these things. Find your own way in your journey and move forward. So it may be grouping yourself with a group of people. Or I love what he said, listening to other individuals that may give you profound statements. But we have to stop and quit listening to all the noise. Oh, wow. Oh, my God. Oh, I am so taken by this. I had no idea. I, I, I'm part of the audience right now. <laughs> <laughs> I may be the host, but I'm part of the audience. Thank you so much. Oh my goodness. Okay, continue. Sorry to interrupt. Oh no. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Yes. So we're talking about the fast. So I declare the order the second seven day fast, so making 14 days. Now remember what I said earlier that I had this elusive moment where I felt God was telling me your problem is spiritual. Now 
in the middle of my second seven day fast, I was studying and it was in the afternoon and I slept off and I fell into revelation, a profound revelation. Now I saw myself in a hall, thousands of people were there and I was told these people are here to celebrate you. I said, wow, that's great. But guess what? I was sitting, it looks like, on the second row on the left side of the auditorium. Everyone had food in their hands. Mm. But the celebrant, myself, I had no food. So another Elosef moment, but this one took place in the spiritual realm. So I asked myself right there in the vision, if I am the celebrant, why am I not being served my food? So again, because I was fasting, I had, I was spiritually energized. I had a level of spiritual authority on me. So in the power of the Holy Ghost, I walked to the back room. I knew where I needed to go. So I walked to the back room at the back of the, of the hall. And there were caterers. Dishing the food, making the food. And what I saw there was perplexing. I saw a man in human estimation, this man would weigh about 350 pounds, about six foot tall, huge guy. He was the guy in charge of the meals. So I asked him, I said, I am the celebrant. Why am I not being served my food? And he told me, he said, well, your food is over there. So he pointed to a big flask that was to, the, to his right side. I said, okay. He said, can I help him get the food? I said, yeah, why not? So I opened the flask and guess what I saw? My food was frozen. So now I want us to connect this with my physical life. In the physical realm, I was doing all I could to pass one exam that everybody was passing with no problem. I was studying like a horse. I was study 12 hours a day, sometimes more, yet no result. Hmm. The reason for my problem was in the spiritual realm, my success on that exam was frozen. So that food represented my success. So, I took what appeared to be a shovel. I digged it, dug it, and poured the food in a bowl and then in the pot. So I gave it to him. I said, warm it up, warm it up for me. Actually, sorry, I take that back. I poured it in a bowl, then he, he, he poured the food in the pot. So he now asked me a question. And this is where people need to be very spiritually aware. He said, are you sure you want me to pour it all? I said, yes, pour it all, everything. So if, he, if I had not been spiritually sensitive, another LSF moment, and I'd say, well, just pour a little bit, the next thing would be I would have failed again at my attempt in the physical realm. So he poured it all. And then... I woke up. This was day three of the second seven day fast. I knew that I had gotten my victory. I knew that God had given me victory. So the rest of the fast, I was just thanking God, just praising God. Thank you, God, for the victory. Thank you, God, for the victory. Guess what? A month after, the same exam that I've not been able to pass for only God knows how long. You passed it. I passed it. Yes. So that, that's why I said faith has been a 
critical part of my life. I wouldn't be where I am today. Doctor, without... was the block to that test in your own head, your own mind? Where do you, is that what the message is here? The block to passing that test was your own block. No. So, no. The, yeah, tell me more. There, 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 are, there are some things that are very difficult to understand in the spiritual realm. So, what was going on in the spirit, spiritual realm was, it was not my problem. I was being attacked in the spirit, spirit realm by some unknown forces. So there's a scripture that sheds light, light on this. It's Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. It says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but we wrestle against principalities, against powers, against spiritual darkness of this world. So flesh and blood means you're not fighting human beings. You're fighting spiritual forces. So the spirit realm is, is real. It's almost like the physical world, but you have to operate at a frequency to be able to tap into that realm. It's almost like you're in this world, but it's just a different realm. So I was being attacked for some reason, of course, because they didn't want me to achieve my purpose. They didn't want me to become a physician because now look at me today. I'm helping my patients. They didn't want me to fulfill my purpose. So that was their goal. And I, I want to submit that many things that we go through in life, many things, not all, are rooted in the spiritual realm. But the, the issue is that our world has been, our, our world is so material, we've become so materialistic that we forget that we are spirit being. So for example, I am a spirit living in the body that's one thing i i, I tell my my disciples i am a spirit living in a body the real me you can't see it the real patricia you can't see it the patricia is inside the body is just enveloping patricia that real me exists in the spirit realm now the things that we encounter in life, many of them, we, have, we can find the solution by making physical efforts, but some of them is solution lies in the spirit realm. And that's why that scripture I quoted earlier says, we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. It means we're not fighting human beings. You're fighting unseen forces. So unseen forces, we're fighting me. And God had to bring it to my awareness that your problem is not physical. Your problem is not you studying. Your problem is not you. Your problem is in the spiritual realm. Now, let, let me say something, though. I want to tie this in. When someone is being attacked, the spirit realm manipulates the elements of nature to achieve their purpose. Now, let me tell you what element was manipulated in my case. After I got my deliverance, it was like a light bulb went on for me. I began to realize what I was doing wrong on my test. I realized that I was being a poor test taker. I realized that I was second guessing myself. Yeah, yeah. I realized that when I answer a question, I change it and I change it to the wrong one. But that awareness wasn't there until the spiritual aspect was taken care of. So you see the link, you see the connection? Yes. yes. So the process of success, that in that my ability to come to the understanding of the things that I needed to do differently to pass my test. Doctor, how does that awareness that you just described, because it is within us. Yeah, and I agree 100. I see that so clearly. But what would you, how do individuals that might be listening today, 
what would you recommend to them to help them move through some of that that block the block that they may have because that is cultural that is society that is a lack of confidence in ourselves it's a spiritual block it's a mental block it's a yeah it's a it feels like a physical block but what are some things that you would you might recommend or i know you talked about the spiritual for you but what could they do to start to recognize that it is within them? I think being truthful to yourself is very important. Being truthful to yourself. Because sometimes we tell ourselves what we want to hear. Yes. Or, or, or what, what feels good to us. Being truthful to ourselves, constant self-examination. Because even though my underlying problem was spiritual, I had to do a self-examination of myself to finally figure out what my problem was. Yes, yes. So what, what I did was, oh yes, I remember now. I, after I had that revelation and I had that victory, I started to look online on different forums how to like topics along the line of how to prepare for your exams. Ah. And then I started to get some hints. Yes. And those hints switch on the light. Bulb. Oh, wow. Oh, that might be my problem. Oh, I see. So I've been second guessing myself. Oh, yes. And then some of those forums, they'll discuss strategies once you pick an answer, just go with that answer. Yes. Don't change it. Keep moving. Yes. Oh, my goodness. Yes. Keep moving. Don't second yeah, guess be yourself. Because usually the first feeling that you have or the first uh, answer you give, oh, my gosh, I've been guilty of that myself, um, is, oh, should I have done that? Oh, my goodness. Why did I, I should, did, is this right? And if I stay just like you're suggesting, if I stay with my first gut feel or intuition or knowing, I wrote a book a couple of years ago called The Listening and the Knowing. Mm. And what you're describing is exactly that. It's being able to understand how to listen and then to know, not doubt yourself, but to know, yes, that is my spirit or that is my God or that is whatever others believe that they get their uh, support from their uh, nurturing and support from but you know what I've got a saying and I had to I just have to share this but you just said knowing yourself is so important and one of the things that I always say is authenticity is the best gift we can give ourselves and authenticity is the best gift we can give the world mm. because you said know who you are and that self-discovery is so key to making our life easier doctor yes to making our purpose more clear to helping us create our passions and live our dreams and goals yeah Oh my gosh. I, I don't know. I think that we've come to, did you have some other kind of things you want to share? I just want to say that these are the kind of things that Hello Self is about. And this interview with the doctor has been different than any of my other, not totally different, but somewhat different. And I love that because I find alignment with what he's talking about and not everybody might but find your own way within the suggestions that the doctor is giving and the thing is I, I love what you've been saying is you showed your own perseverance you showed at a young age and this is so true doctor a lot of times in my coaching I find out I say what did you want to do when you were six years old? What did you, what did, I remember getting, my aunt worked for, she cleaned houses for 
uh, wealthy people in Indianapolis and they would give her clothes. And what her girls didn't use, she would give to my family. And I remember taking those clothes home and standing in front of the mirror and modeling them. And I said, someday I'm going to model. Someday I'm going to do a show. I'm going to hop. The things that we tell are, and you just confirmed that you told your father, I'm going to be a doctor. Yeah. And then you did not, even though you ran into one no after another no, you still stayed in there. And we are better in our society now because of you, for you. We are your patients waiting, not just your medical patients, your spiritual patients, your presence patients, people that just want to hear from you, the gift on this. Uh, and there's more to come. I know there's more to come from you. Do you have a picture of your, do you have your book there with you? I do. And I was going to add one thing real quick. But here, oh, yeah. If, there, yeah. if there's any more that you, yes. Yeah, I just wanted to say to people, to, to our audience, do not let trying circumstances limit you. Mm -hmm. Do not let what people say about you, especially when it's negative, limit you don't allow those situations to limit you because they will only rob you of your future know who you are know that in you is greatness know that in you is a gift for the world. Oh, yes. Yes. Know that your God is with you. Don't ever give up on yourself. Don't ever give up on your purpose. Granted, there are times that we may have to recalibrate. There are times we may have to change course, change path. Yes. They don't ever stop believing because a failure is that person that stops believing that they can achieve something. The day you stop believing in yourself, mm. that's the day you start failing. Amen. Amen. So, because I'm saying that because look at what I went through, even the, the residency issue. Took me a while, but I finally got in. But I got in and God helped me. I did pretty good in residency. Like I said, I was honored with several awards to the glory of God, including the Clinical Excellence Award. Yes. That was the same me that hundreds of programs told me, no, we don't want you. No, you're not fit for our program. That's the same me that went on and did all the great things that God helped me to do. And that's the same me who is practicing today. Yes. And, and my nurses can attest to you. I believe that they enjoy having me as a physician, having me as a colleague. So don't ever stop believing in yourself. Don't ever stop dreaming. Yes. Keep on pressing. Keep on pushing explore resources channel the community there are people in the community that have the answers to what you're looking for the world is so small today go to online forums see what people are saying take the best of the advice don't ever stop believing you can achieve whatever god has put in your heart yes you. i just thought i, I need to say that oh my you. god no a fabulous wrap up too but it, it, it just don't give up never i know people say to me patricia why don't you retire i have twice no <laughs> why don't you, you know what the, the journey isn't over till the journey's over and i just say live oh my you are 
I, I want to know more about who you are and what you do. He is, he's a family man too. He's married and has, was mm -hmm. it three children? Mm -hmm. And not only that, look at all the things that he's done and is doing with his Bible, with his authorship. These are things, if you just look for yourself, you can do it and reach out just like he said, Look at the resources that are available. And if you get a no, don't let that stop you. Just go to, I always like to say, next. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> next. <laughs> I love that. Oh, and if you say, I can't, here's another tip. Say cancel. Don't put that out in the universe. If you say, oh, I can't do that, or this is not the, no, cancel. We don't want that out in the universe because the things you say can impact the way you feel about living and about life. So get another avenue, get out there, cancel, and move on. Yeah. I, I have to tell this story. Oh, my God. I'm like you, doctor. I want to tell you. Made, you Thank inspired you. me so much. Thank but I, I have a grandson. When he was six years old. I said, Gavin, I'm not going to buy you any more toys. You got a whole room full. And I said, but Mom Pat writes, and I've been thinking, would you like to write a book? Oh, Mom Pat, I'm only six years old. That's for adults. I couldn't do that. And I said, <laughs> Gavin, don't ever tell Mom Pat you can't do something. Mm. And he is a published author at six years old on Amazon. Wow. He's 12 now, but when we publish that book, there is no limit. It's just mm. like the doctor has been saying, there is no limit to what you can do if you decide to do it and you seek whatever higher power you need to encourage you and keep you moving forward. Uh, it, it This is such a good, oh, wow, what a great thing. This is I can't wait for this to get out there. But doctor, <laughs> I did want to, if somebody wants to contact you, and I love the last uh, strategies you've given us, where could, where would you suggest they reach you? Do you have a website? And where could they get your book? So yeah, if you can tell us. Book. Yeah, okay. Could be and should be. That's yeah. about you. Could yeah. be and should be. Unlocking yeah. your inner strength. Remember yeah. that. So the, the book is on Amazon. It's on Barnes Noble. It's pretty much everywhere books are sold. Ingram's Park carries it as well. So for those who want to have it in their stores, they can get it on Ingram's Park. Yes. Uh, in terms of reaching me, my email address, it's d for David, R for Robert, with a period, Oye Wale. That's O Y E W O L E at Jaya Ministries.org. So Jaya is J for Jesus, E H I A H Ministries with an S dot O R G. So Dr. Dot Oye Wally at Jaya Ministries.org. Yes. And we will, and I want to tell the doctor, we will have a copy of your book on this uh, podcast and we will also put your links so I'll get those links from you so that we can have them out there so that people don't have to remember them they can at least when we post this on social media they can they can have those if they want to learn more and he's right here in Hendersonville for the local people primary care doctor and yeah. I was asking him about what is that? I, I, I'm so naive about all this. I just go to a doctor and they say, your blood pressure is good or whatever. That's all I know. So I said, what's a primary care doctor? But he's here in Hendersonville and you do practice to still, doctor. Yes, yes. yes. I'm a practicing physician. That's I care primary care. That's my practice. And I'm, I am accepting new patients as well. So a primary care physician, pretty much we are the, pretty much the gateway to medicine. We treat everything. We are experienced with all, all the organs. And when we get to a point where we feel like a patient needs specialists, we refer them to specialists. You mentioned high blood pressure. I treat that. I treat diabetes. I coordinate care for stroke, for heart failure, COPD, 
I do urgent care stops as well. So pretty much we do everything. Yes. Primary care physician. I think it, what I like about doctors skills and path is not only does he have the medical background. When I go to a doctor, my doctor, it's very seldom about medicine. <laughs> it's more about life. I know my uh, primary care doctor, and I don't know, I may be switching. Oh, well, you're welcome. <laughs> yeah, but, and I do love my doctor. He, he accepts all my craziness, and I tell him that I'm watching you on Dr. Google, so don't tell me anything. That... <laughs> but, um, but I like the incorporating of medicine and the being of who you are as a person because they are so connected. And I don't know if you're familiar with this and you may not support it, but Louise Hay said that everything that goes on inside of us starts from an emotional issue, something. Mm -hmm. And I, I have her book and I can tell you if I'm going to get a sore throat, I go, I open that book and I look at that and it says, is there something you've been wanting to say that you're not saying it? I go, how did you know that? <laughs> so there, it, there's all kinds of things out there to help us with our own discovery of self. And so I just, I, I would highly recommend get to know the doctor and you're going to be speaking, doctor. Speaking you're going to be, would you take, if somebody wanted you to come? And oh, speak? yes. I, I, I thank you so much. Yes. I do take speaking engagements. Yes. They can yes. definitely reach out to me. I love to speak. My goal is to empower people to discover their potential and embrace true freedom. That is my mission. Yes, I am open to speaking. I take church engagements as well as I'm a pastor as well. So yes, yes please contact me. I would love to come speak. Yes, please. Because I think, and you decide what you want as an individual or as an organization, but I think he's got a message that the world needs right now. We are a society trying to figure out who we are and what we want. And, I, and I'm not going to blame the pandemic because I think this is partially our issue and not necessarily the pandemic. So if you are looking for a speaker and you understand now the frame of reference that Dr. Oli, uh, Oya Wally, <laughs> I still struggle with you, it. You can just say Dr. O, that's fine. Yeah, and that the doctor, the message he has, I would say engage him in your organization and Take him out to some of the corporations, I think, would really benefit from this too, business corporations, as well as your church. So reach out to him and we'll have all this information on our podcast that we're going to be posting. Okay, is there anything else you'd like to say, doctor, before we go? I would like to say thank you to you, Ms. Patricia, for this platform. Like I said earlier, I love what you do. The I is ca cabaret. Awesome. Love the podcast. You're changing life, changing lives, transforming lives. We need more people like you. Thank you so much. Oh. I do not take this for granted. Thank you for the, for the platform. Well, thank you. You made my platform too. And it's people like you that I want to give society different views of of the world, coming from different aspects of the world. Um, so I'm eternally grateful to you. And we will know more about each other. And yes, the High Heels Cabaret Show, I may have you on there for a performance. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Okay. And to all of the audience for tuning in today, I am grateful to have you. And I hope that we have shared one thing or two things today that change the trajectory or your, of your life or maybe confirm it and maybe uh, encourage you to reach out to others to help them in their journey too because this is your life. As I always say when I sign off, keep dreaming and I am again your host, Patricia Leonard. See you next time. 
Thank you for joining Hello Self today and may it offer insight and inspire you to stay on your runway to success. Like, share, and subscribe. And remember this, keep dreaming.